so welcome back to SHH Live, our TV studio where during the whole week here at the Salon de l'Autologerie uh, we are welcoming and listening to the people of Autologerie and to their ideas. Uh, this session will feature a presentation about chronography by the head of uh, research and development of uh, Urwerk, Dominique Buzer. Dominique, the stage is yours. Thanks. So welcome and uh, thanks for your interest. Uh, I will tell you something about the most complicated project we ever did with Urwerk. It took us eight years to develop. And uh, when we started, we thought, well, it is a project like any others. But now we finished and we have to say we didn't know that it is that complicated, but also it's very, very interesting. And I think at the end we realized that it's that what uh, UREC means. We want to go further. We want to develop something new. A short look back to history. UREC started like that in 1997. It was uh, with this watch that UREC showed for the first time, this kind of uh, complication in a three-dimensional way. This 103, we can say that uh, that brought us to light. The first time people realized there's a new... A new oh, sorry, there is something too fast. That was the first time that uh, Urwerk came to light. People realized there's a, a new way of watchmaking, telling the time different in three-dimensional way. Uh, we got further because we don't want it just to repeat these satellite complications. So we started to think what is the connection between an owner of a watch and the watch? What kind of influences has, is between the watch and the owner? So we developed this EMC complication that means it's a mechanical watch, which can be controlled by electronics parts. So the owner has the possibility to adjust the rate, the accuracy of the watch exactly for his wrist. So it was the first time that we combined electronics and mechanics. Of course, it's still a mechanical watch, but you can control it but by electronics but it is independent. It's just to control, and it's up to the owner to do the correction, to have the accuracy for his wrist. Uh, that was the start for uh, developing an own, our own movement. It's this kind of movement, purely mechanics, combined with some electronics. This was in 2016 we presented. But at that time, we already started to develop the AMC. We wanted to go further. And uh, you see on the next picture, this is now the AMC movement. You can clearly see some parts are the same as the double barrel and also around the balance wheel. But what is special here is that we combined this wristwatch with a clock. We wanted to have the same concept as Brugge with his sympathetic. That means there is a mother clock which is giving the calibration, the precision to a watch. Brugge used a pocket watch. We did it with a wristwatch. And there you see this uh, brown red levers they are activated by two pushes so that it is possible to check the accuracy of the watch. That means you can have an influence to adjust it, and you also can calibrate the watch by second level. And the third function is to wind it up, to rewind the watch. That means during the night, you can place the watch on the clock. Now. Let me show you what it means. AMC stands for Atomic Mechanical Control. 
This watch was designed to fit and work with its space, an atomic clock. Atomic clocks are the most precise clocks you can have at the moment. And so we wanted this uh, concept of Brugge to have finished with the most precise clock. Therefore, we take uh, atomic clock, and this atomic clock will rewind the watch, will set it to the correct time, and also adjust its rate. That means you can wear your watch, your wristwatch, and during the night you put it on the clock. It's a base where it fits, and then this atomic clock will every night calibrate your wristwatch and also adjust it to the rate you need that it's perfect on your wrist. So it's really the connection between wristwatch and the most precise clock you can have, an atomic clock. Now, let me tell you something about the complexity of this movement. First, the atomic clock has to know what is going on with this uh, mechanical movement. And that means when we push from the from outside with the atomic clock, at the right moment, we have to immediately do the adjustment. When the wristwatch is going too fast, he has to make it slower, or the opposite. So this is this part in, uh, in black. You see here the acti... Where is, where is the pointer? You, can, you see? You can, you can go with your hand. You can go with your hand. Okay. Okay. Up you can see that uh, there is the pusher, and then the lever comes down, and here you have got the balance wheel. And we have a special element over there, which will pull in this direction. And then the next element checks the accuracy of the watch. That means we have this element on the second wheel. And in this position, that means the wristwatch is precise. Nothing will happen. It just is in contact, but it won't change the, the rate. This element is in contact with this uh, wheel upside, and this will do the correction. Now you see some positions where the wristwatch is going too fast. That means we have here, it activates, it pushes this half wheel on this side, and there we will change the accuracy by two seconds a day. This is a theoretical value. It depends on each watch. For uh, the watch we have got here, it's 1.3 seconds. So that means when uh, the watch is making uh, 4. Point, uh, or we can say 2.6 seconds too fast, then after two nights, it's correcting each night 1.3 seconds, it will be at zero. So in the worst case, the, the precision will be at the end of this uh, process the half of 1.3 seconds, and in the best case, it's on zero. It depends in which direction it's uh, corrected and where the basic uh, position was. This is like a kind of uh, differential system so that we can check what kind of uh, precision the watch had. You see it again here where this element is. It's under this wheel with uh, red and uh, green color. And there you have got the index so that you can follow on your wristwatch whether uh, there had been a correction in plus or minus rate. So what we had to, uh, what kind of problems we had to face with this project? On one side, we had a small wristwatch where we had to integrate all these mechanical parts to do this correction. And on the other side, we had these atomic clocks, 
where we had to, to take the action and uh, all the electronics to push at the right time on these uh, levers to do these corrections and adjusting. And so on the one side, we have a mother clock, 30 kilograms, with an atomic oscillator. And on the other side, there is the small wristwatch with uh, this mechanical part, which is uh, really complicated. Now, the second function is to calibrate. For example, at midnight, we want that uh, the hands of the wristwatch are exactly at the same time as the atomic clock. Therefore, there is the second lever at the right side, which acts like a chronograph when you set the chronograph on zero. We will do this before midnight. That means, for example, two minutes before midnight. And then we let it there. And exactly at midnight, we liberate this lever, and the wristwatch starts again to work. At that time, it's already wound up by the atomic clock. There you see these hearts and the lever, which is pushing on these two hearts. That means the second is set to zero, and also the minute. So we can have this uh, calibration between the atomic clock and the wristwatch. You see this uh, complex element on the second wheel. There is the, the heart to do the, the time setting on zero, and the upper element to have this uh, correction to adjust the movement. These parts have to be very light, otherwise we would influence the, the mechanics of the watch. Downstairs, you see this uh, spring, which makes the, the friction so that you can change the position of the hand. You see again here on the movement, this uh, element is uh, under this uh, bridge, the double bridge, uh, well integrated in this movement. Now, part two, we will present in Basel, that means the atomic clock with the whole box, where you can put in the wristwatch I can show you here how it looks like, the base. This is in aluminium. It was milled, and you can see the two boxes for the atomic clock. This atomic clock is very accurate. That means on 300,000 years, the difference will be one second. So that means we have built a watch for generations, what was always the goal of uh, Urweg. So part two will come in Basel, and uh, I'm happy to present you then the next part, the next stage. What are the two bars in the bottom of that? Wait, 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 wait. We'll get a microphone to you. Let, it, let him finish. <laughs> Just go to the end. Yeah, I will, I will come. So, there are already some questions, and of course, we will have a small discussion for questions. So, let's get a microphone for the gentleman. Dominic, thank you. I have some questions for you as well, but can we get a microphone for the gentleman here so he can ask his question? Um, th thank you for showing us the, at least the case of some of the case of the atomic clock. Can you tell us? What seems to be in the bottom of that case? The two bars. Yeah. It seems yeah, to yeah. be two solid bars. It yes. looks to be a very heavy case for an empty aluminium case. Exactly. exactly. Well, it's like this. Uh, we have one of these bars is just the power supply for the atomic clock. And in the other bar, it's really the atomic clock. And uh, when you talk about uh, atomic clocks, there are more or less done like mechanical watches. That means you have a kind of uh, beating element, that means the oscillator, that's the balance wheel in a mechanical watch, and you have a kind of escapement. So with the atomic clock, that means the oscillator, the beating element, is, uh, is physics.
That means that you have quantum effects, and you have a, seat, a certain frequency. And then that's what I call the escapement, escapement for an atomic clock. That means then you have to, uh, to, have to do this with the electronics, that your reading element is stable with that frequency. So these two parts make an atomic clock. So it doesn't make sense you have a, a really precise element, like we have, for example, a rubidium atomic clock, but your electronics is not on the highest level. So always these two, and it's the same for uh, mechanical watches. If you have a precise spiral, but your escapement is nothing, then it doesn't make sense. And so we have got uh, these two elements, and uh, the atomic clock we use here was uh, developed by a Swiss institute, which also delivers atomic clocks for satellite systems, for GPS satellites, uh, the European system, Galileo satellites. So it's really uh, not just uh, something you can buy everywhere, it's really uh, high quality. You but you see there is some, uh, some space in the box that we need for all our electronics to do this sequence, to calibrate, to adjust the, the wristwatch. And also to show the time, atomic time. So, Dominica, clock and a watch, they are twins. Basically, I assume at the end, the atomic clock is going to be a, a beautifully designed object, although it's heavy. And you put it in your house, and then in the, at night, you take off your watch, you put it on it exactly, in a specific exactly. place on it, and uh, it synchronizes and uh, it exactly. adjusts. That's the idea. Not many people have an atomic clock at home. Let's say that, that. Right. this is a new market. Right? Atomic it. clocks generally are in labs and in research institutions and in universities, not at uh, home. Uh, OK, this is great. How has the salon been so far for you, for Ruberg? Well, so, so far we are really happy because uh, when we present this, uh, this concept, this project to people, they are astonished because Urek is known for uh, telling the time differently. And now we are known to tell the exact time. And uh, <laughs> that is really uh, funny when uh, people come to us, they didn't know that we are working on it. During eight years, we didn't say any word to anybody. And suddenly, we come with such, a, such an object. And uh, we can also see that uh, Business is doing well. It's better than last year. Yeah. In general, for all the brands. Yes, yeah, for, most, and uh, yes. I think uh, we have good products at the moment. So we are really uh, happy for this year, mm -hmm. how it started. Do you already have an idea of the price bracket of the combination atomic clock and watch? Well, this one is, uh, as I told, um, eight years of development. Yeah. And, uh, so the first one is very expensive, but the sellable ones? <laughs> well, uh, it will stay expensive because uh, it's... Uh, Fait sur mesure, you can say. It's really the single pieces we will change, we will adjust, we will uh, do special things. And uh, it will be a project which will always be on the highest level. It's not something we will do hundreds. There will be a few pieces of uh, this clock, atomic yeah. clock, because also the small wristwatch is very complicated. Absolutely. And to bring those together, you have to see Bröcke, he did. Uh, I think around 11 pieces in total, but only one or two had all the functions we integrated here. Yeah. And I can say we understand why Brege, uh, what kind of problems he had. So we had to develop. And what is also new for us is with this atomic clock, all the electronics. OK. So Dominic, uh, thank you very much. Good luck. Looking thanks. forward to seeing the wall piece assembled. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. And this uh, ends for now the session. Uh, the next one is at uh, 4.30 p.m. Geneva time. It will be a presentation about uh, presentation, a short documentary as well about uh, uh, the project of restoration of the ancient clocks of the Palace Museum in Beijing at the Manufacture Cartier. 4.30 p.m. Geneva time here in the studio. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>